Welcome back to another lesson. Today we are going to talk about factorials and how we can use logarithms to calculate them. You may remember factorials from high school. A factorial is defined as a number multiplied by every other number less than it, stopping at 1. Zero factorial is defined as 1. The first six factorials are shown below that. So consider 6 factorial in the bottom line. It is equal to 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. The final answer is 720. I should have mentioned that the exclamation mark is the notation we use for factorials. What about 10 factorial? Same rule applies. But what if I take the logarithm of both sides? By laws of logarithms, I can split the right hand side into 10 numbers added together. That final answer is 6.559763, as seen on the last line. By the way, if you're confused by logarithms right now, I would recommend watching my previous lessons on that topic to better understand what's going on. We know that the inverse of a logarithm is an exponential, so now we must raise 10 to that power. Following some basic laws of exponents from one line to another, we get a final answer of 3,628,800. By the way, we have covered non-integer exponents, like 6.559763, and how to compute them in a previous lesson. To be fair, this is the actual answer I got on my calculator, but that rounds up to the one seen above it. There is always rounding error to be considered. 6.559763 has 7 digits of accuracy. Our final answer of 3,628,800 is also accurate to 7 digits. Not a coincidence. Now let's compute 10 factorial the way it was defined in the first slide of this lesson. It is easy to verify by repeated multiplication that the answer is 3,628,800. Does that look familiar? Within rounding, it is exactly the same answer we got by using logarithms and exponentiation. Take a look at your scientific calculator. It should have a button for factorials. On this one, you must enter the number first. Then you must press the second button, as boxed in red on the left. Lastly, press the end factorial button to get your answer. Practice a bit if you need to. That is the best way to learn this stuff. On my calculator, I can compute 69 factorial, which gives me the answer seen on the last line. Go ahead and try this for yourself. Does your answer match mine? Now try 70 factorial. What do you get? If your calculator is like mine, you probably got an error message. Why is that? It is an overflow error, which basically means the number is too big. It has exceeded the calculator's maximum capacity. Is there a way to circumvent this? Yes, we can use logarithms to help us out. Pause the video and follow through line by line to make sure you understand the process. We convert multiplication to addition, and the 98 in the exponent moves out front. So the base 10 logarithm of 70 factorial is 100.078, as seen in the last line. The inverse of a logarithm is exponentiation, so now we must raise 10 to the 100.078. Our final answer is boxed in orange. That is 70 factorial. Please note that for the exponent, I only displayed 6 digits past the decimal on this screen. If you want more digits of accuracy, you can't round down. Keep as many digits as you can for intermediate calculations. Then your final answer won't suffer from rounding. Besides logarithms, is there another way to calculate 70 factorial? Yes, we can use scientific notation. We already know that 69 factorial is 1.711 times 10 to the 98th. That is underlined in red. Multiply that by 70, which is 7.0 times 10 to the 1 in scientific notation. Regroup in the second line. 11.97 times 10 to the 99 is the same as 1.197 times 10 to the 100. It is a simple matter of moving the decimal place. 
Within rounding, the answer box in orange is identical to that computed with logarithms, as seen on the previous screen. So which method is better? Well, that all depends. If you have already computed logarithms, such as this pre-made log table, then it is much faster to add them all up and exponentiate at the end. If that is not the case, it is much faster to perform repeat a multiplication to get a factorial. Computing each logarithm requires a series. This takes a long time, as we have seen in previous lessons. John Napier spent 20 years doing that by hand hundreds of years ago. That concludes this lesson. Next time we will extend this idea and develop a method to quickly approximate the value of a factorial. Stay tuned for that. I look forward to seeing you then. Thanks for watching.